For the defenders of Pearl, heroism came as naturally as breath. They reacted instinctively by rushing to their posts. They knew as well that our nation would be sustained by the nobility of its cause. So did Americans of Japanese ancestry, who came by the hundreds to give wounded Americans blood, and the thousands of their kinsmen all across America who took up arms for their country. Every American believed in cause. The men I speak of would be embarrassed to be called heroes. Instead, I would tell you probably with defiance, foes can sink American ships, but not the American spirit. They may kill us, but never the ideals that made us proud to serve. Talk to those who survived to fight another day. They would repeat the Navy hymn that uh, Barbara and I sing every Sunday in that lovely little chapel up at, uh, up at Camp David. Eternal Father strong to save, whose arm has found a restless wave. Oh, hear us when we cry to thee for those in peril on the sea. Back in 1942, June of 42, I remember how Henry Stimson, the Secretary of War, defined the American soldier and how that soldier should be, and I quote, brave without being brutal, self-confident without boasting, being part of an irresistible might without losing faith in individual liberty. The heroes of the harbor engraved that passage on every heart and soul. They fought for a world of peace, not war, where children's dreams speak more loudly than the brashest tyrants' guns. Because of them, this memorial lives to pass its lessons from one generation to the next, lessons as clear as this Pacific sky. One of Pearl Harbor's lessons is that together, we could summon lightness against the dark. That was Dwight Eisenhower. Another, and it, when it comes to national defense, finishing second means finishing last. World War II also taught us that isolationism is a bankrupt notion. The world does not stop at our water's edge, and perhaps above all, that real peace real peace, the peace that lasts, means the triumph of freedom, not merely the absence of war. 